We got a special guest coming up next. This guy's been touring around from a lot of different places. He's from Phoenix, Arizona. He's America's favorite old man. Everybody give it up for Arizona Lou. I am excited because this is my first time in the state, in Little Rock. And this, what better place than here to do my 300th comedy appearance. Right. And I want to thank you for putting up and respecting the old ugly. <laughs> you ask how old? How old are you? Sir, you didn't say anything. You expect me to do this comedy stuff by myself? 74. <laughs> Uh, in, in comedy, we call that a sympathy applause. <laughs> Although, I, I, I do need some sympathy. Let's hear it if you've ever done anything stupid. We have three people back there that are easy, either lazy or liars. <laughs> I uh, went kiteboarding the Dominican Republic. Now, Dominican Republic, you probably wonder, that's in the Caribbean. Kiteboarding is where you're riding a wakeboard and being pulled by a huge kite up in the wind. Awesome. That wasn't the stupid part. In the morning, before the wind picked up, I would do sup. How many have heard of sup? That's stand-up paddle boarding. S-U-P, as opposed to what I do up here, Suck. Well, <laughs> oh, quit laughing. Stand up comedy. <laughs> and she put a K on us. <laughs> well, I paddled across a bay to a narrow beach and stepped off in about knee deep water. And I saw a little wave coming in. I knew it didn't like me because it was going to take my board, 12 foot board, from me and flip it up on the beach. So I says, I can win this bout with Mother Nature. I grabbed the loop of the rope at the back of the board and held on tight, real tight. Well, the wave flipped the board over, wrapping the rope around my finger, and then slammed it. I won. I still had the board. <laughs> but not all my hand. <laughs> What's funny about that? <laughs> I knew I was in trouble when I looked down and saw my index finger dangling by some skin. Hey, that was good news. I knew where my finger was. If someone had been around, think how embarrassing it would have been. Hey, has anybody around here seen a finger? He's got to catch that crab! <laughs> well, I put my finger back up on the stump. Grabbed the board with my good hand, went across the narrow beach and narrow road, trying to get some help. <whistles> Nothing. So I decided to use my extensive Spanish vocabulary. Emergency! Well, the security guard was sitting in the chair as comfortably, probably, as you are, not wanting to move a muscle, so I put my finger back in the dangle mode. Well, he got up put my board where it'd be safe so I could go back to the road and hitchhike into town. Hey, hey, hey! Well, would you stop and pick up a barefoot guy wearing nothing but a wet black hat, a little wet red blood, a little wet black speedos? Well, the second car did start, stop. It was John Paul. He spoke German, knew English, and knew where the emergency room was. I tried to return the favor when I got in his car by not bleeding all over, which was easy to do because the blood never got down past my, my elbow. And when I held my hand up, I hadn't realized that I had just broken two other fingers. But I did notice, now you ladies will appreciate this. On the cell phone, are you looking it up? I didn't break one fingernail. That's when I decided to quit SUP for the day. 
Well, when we got to the emergency room, the first thing they did is they stuck an IV in. They do that so you can't escape. And uh, actually, before we got to the emergency room, I couldn't see going to the emergency room in my current state of abbreviated tower. So we stopped by my hotel. I put on a t-shirt in the back of a chair. It turned out it was grubby. Mother would not have been proud. Now, you're suddenly smiling. Why did your mother always tell you about underwear and hospitals and emergency rooms? Clean, wear, wear clean underwear in case you have to go. Well, and I put on, on my cargo shorts on top of my wet swim trunks, which was stupid and embarrassing when John Paul had to zip me up. And had I known it was going to be three hours before they got around to fixing my hand, I would have done some other things there. I would have taken a picture of my hand for my website, ArizonaLou.com. Oh, by the way, if you want a t-shirt, it costs you 10 bucks, it'll help out a charity. And I also would have put on clean, dry underwear. Mom would have been proud until she'd find out that John Paul would have to tuck me in. Well, they released me from the hospital the next le late the next day, and my hand was all bandaged up except my pinky and my thumb. I could still use my hand, though. I could use it for a hat rack. I could change TV channels. <laughs> I could do the wave. I'm not even Queen Elizabeth. But I couldn't engage in my favorite evening activity I would like to do with my right hand. Oh, come on now. Well, I'm on the internet. I like to use it to hold my pencil and take notes. I'm not completely rehab, can't quite close it, but I hope I'll be able to close it tightly and keep my center finger erect so I'll have the proper equipment in case I need to uh, drive in New York City. Now, I'm so old, I was born in MCMXLI. <laughs> now, some of you recognize that as Roman numerals. I always have to explain it to Pine Bluff. When I was a kid, that's all we had. Not Pine Bluff, the Roman numerals. Back then we had a whole different meaning for XXX. <laughs> that meant... 30, 30, 30, my bad. I failed school. <laughs> you haven't been watching much Sesame Street, have you? And you people not laughing back there at the table, you've been watching too much porn, that's why it's not funny. <laughs> that didn't mean you're over 30. You're 30 and already over the hill. And Roman numerals take up so much space, the serial number was bigger than my Apple iPhone. <laughs> and every time I dial a number, I get Roman charges. <laughs> Driving here on the, on the uh, what is it, the 430? 430? I, uh, people were passing me right and left. They, they were driving like maniacs. I had to be going at least 40. That's miles per hour. And I'm sure they didn't notice my persistent safety just by having my left blinker on the whole time. Well, when you leave here tonight, get on the 440, please don't run over the old guy driving slowly with his left blinker on. Because <laughs> it might be me. <laughs> or that gentleman back there. <laughs> and my parents said, Lewis, in life, you have to earn everything. And that took him to heart. Something I didn't earn was voice surgery. So I've got this squeaky little voice. Can you imagine doing comedy? I sound worse than Jay Leno. And it's embarrassing on the telephone. When my voice all of a sudden goes up high. Hello? May I please speak to the man of the house? <coughs> oh, excuse me, the modern version for you people? 
May I speak to the man of the house? <laughs> or even worse, he'll say, Are your parents home? Oh, no. Yes, they're on the mantle. <laughs> You are great. I enjoyed it. Look me up on the internet. I'm Arizona Lake. Arizona Lou, one more time, everybody.